Hallelujah, Lord. Truly, you are greatly to be praised and greatly to be loved and greatly to be worshipped. We thank you that we worship a victorious God. And if you agree with me, say amen. Amen. We worship a victorious God. We worship a God of love. We worship a God of peace. We worship a God of joy. We worship a God of hope, Lord Jesus. We thank you so much that you are our God. And apart from you, we have no good thing, Lord. And so even this morning, we want to thank you. We want to welcome you. We want you to ask you, Lord God, to open our hearts and our spirits and our minds and our eyes to see that we have worshipped, we have a great God. Amen. And so, Lord, just help us to just focus upon you this morning. In Jesus' name, all God's people shout, Amen. Amen. Wow, so good. The puppet is nice and low. You know, these puppets are so high. Uh. I'm like, <laughs> doesn't work for me. You know, we are coming to the end of the book of Romans. And how many of you, you have enjoyed a whole series of the book of Romans? Amen. Just wave your hands at us. Encourage all the preachers who have done so well. But we are actually not at the end of the uh, series. It's just that we are now at chapter 16, where I will give one version of chapter 16. But actually, there will be a few more sermons on the book of Romans. Pastor Chu will go back to chapter 8 to, uh, next week. And, and that's why... Uh, uh, he is talking about man you. Uh, you must bring your friends to hear also about Romans, you know. Same, same guy speaking. <laughs> but as we come to the end of Romans and in chapter 16, Paul comes out with a powerful proclamation of this God that we worship. And so the main proclamation is found in chapter 16, verse 20. He says, the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. He comes up with this proclamation. And the reason why he comes up with this proclamation is because the whole book of Romans is about the gospel of peace. So in chapter 1, he started by saying in verse 16 of chapter 1, for the gospel is the power of God, it's the dunamis, it's the dynamite of God that will bring salvation to all men for as many as who believe. And even as the rest of Romans is to expound how that takes place, now when he reaches the end of the book of Romans, after thanking the Lord for all the wonderful co-workers, a long list, but it's a powerful thanksgiving to the people of God, he then proclaims, the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. Let's say it together. One, two, three. The God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath underneath your feet. Simple, short memory verse, all right? Let's do it one more time. The God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. Now, what does that mean? What it means is that really in the book of Romans, God is coming out with this proclamation about the gospel of peace. But God is saying is this, there is always a battle for souls of men. There's a battle in the heavenlies for nations. There's a battle in the heavenlies. There's a battle between God's kingdom and the kingdom of darkness. Whether we like it, we don't. Whether we believe in it or we don't, it doesn't really matter. But the truth is, there is a battle in the heavenlies. And that is why Paul begins to put in this verse. As the battle is going on in the heavenlies, he proclaims, but victory has already been won in the heavenlies. Amen? Amen? Come on, say amen if you believe in the truth. Say amen. When you believe in the truth, say amen. 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 The battle has been won in the heavenlies because Jesus has won that battle. But you know what? This battle in the heavenlies is not for God. This battle in the heavenlies is for us, the church, which is why he goes on to say, the God of peace will soon crush Satan, not under God's feet, not under Jesus' feet alone, but under your feet, our feet, which means that the victory that God has won at Calvary belongs to you and to me. Everybody should shout, Amen. 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 Now today, as I'm going to share about this, I want, to think of your, I want you to think of your circumstance. I want you to think of whatever you're battling. I want you to think of maybe diseases, maybe just family problems, maybe just work problems, maybe just personal problems even. But even as you think of all that, God wants to say this to you and to me. The God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. Amen? And notice the word is your, not my feet alone. I want to really release this truth to you. You can be a lone ranger Christian, but you will never have the power of being collectively together as a body. 
How does God crush Satan underneath our feet? Not when you stay at home and become a Lone Ranger Christian. Only when you're in fellowship with the body of Christ. That's why I turn to your neighbor and say, it's so good you're in church today. Come on, say it again. It's so good you're in church today. We must believe in the church, bad as it is, problematic as it is. God chose the church, the body of Christ. I wish I could. We are going to have a few more series on Romans where we explain the power of the ecclesia, the gathering together of God's people, all right? But today is not my time to say that. I'm just going to go on. So I want you to remember, God has won the victory. We are fighting from victory, not for victory. Amen, 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 amen. Yes. He has won that victory, but He wants us to experience that victory. Amen? Now, the word crush is interesting because the word crush is really this word, sun, wow, sun tribo, to break in pieces. Well, I like that. Can you imagine Satan and the kingdom of darkness being broken in pieces? You sound like you don't really like that. Think about your problems. Think about the things that's going on in your situation. Think about what's going on in our nation. Think about what's going on in our communities. God intends to break Satan's kingdom into pieces. Gosh, the people of God say, Amen, stronger. That is what Jesus did on, and is doing and is continuing to do until the day we meet Jesus again. You should have been with us last uh, this few days when we were in Singapore for a conference. It is awesome what God is doing in the nations. Awesome, awesome. We met Egyptians and Syrians and they are telling us, wow, can't tell in public lah. But honestly, what he's doing, he is breaking into pieces and putting Satan underfoot, tramping on him, breaking him, crushing him, breaking down his strength in the Middle East. Amen. Can you imagine that? That's what God wants to do in nations. The nations belong to God. Amen? And God has a plan for nations. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for my life. God has a plan for our lives. God has a plan for everybody's life. And His plan is peace, not war. See? The God of peace, not the God even of power, not even the God of, of health even, not even the God of success, but the God of peace in the midst of war, will crush Satan underneath our feet. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. Question, what is the purpose behind that? The real goal of this war is threefold. Salvation of souls. Amen? That's why Paul starts by saying the gospel is the power of God. It is the only means by which Satan can be crushed underneath the feet of the church of God. It's the only means, the gospel. Everybody say gospel. Good news. It's the power of God. It's the dynamite of God. Until souls are saved, God of peace cannot come to earth to crush Satan underneath his feet, which is why I want to, us to celebrate that every week we have salvation in this church. Amen? Every week, that salvation is very important. Both in El Pizzo, in our cells, in everywhere. Yesterday night, when, when Victor G, he was, how many of you came to hear Victor G? He was good. So few, I must call him back again. But we had six to seven or eight salvations last night. Isn't that awesome? So you want to battle for peace? Start with salvation of souls. Salvation in your families, salvation in your workplace, salvation in churches, salvation in communities. It starts there. Secondly, the goal of whole spiritual warfare of this battle in the heavenlies is to change spiritual atmosphere. That is what it's about. When there's a change and a shift in the spiritual atmosphere, there will be transformation. And when communities are transformed, nations are transformed. Now, I want to share with you, I'm going to use PJB17. How many of you know what PJB stands for? So some still don't know what PJB stands for. PJB 17, I'm sure you all know it, stands for Penoyan Jiwa Borneo. And really for the sake of our visitors and friends who are here with us, on September the 15th and 16th of this year, we had an event in Sabah called PJB Borneo. And I'm going to use that event to illustrate some lessons that I have learned personally, even in being involved in this event, that we should now use and even go back and learn these lessons and use it from now on.
for our nation, for our personal lives, for our family life, for the marketplace. We need to use some of these lessons. And that's why when I saw this verse, I felt the Lord say to me, share what you have learned concerning the whole thing that led up to PJB 17. Now, all of us know, have you seen, the, how many of you have seen the videos, the photos of PJB 17? Uh, just in case you haven't seen, I'll show you some. Lah. Obviously, there was a lot of salvation of souls. On paper, it is 6,000 over. But that is only the number of altar call slips we could count because there were many who we didn't even manage to give them altar call slips. For instance, just in front of me, there was at least a couple of thousand of people that were just flocking to the altar. And I turned around to the usher and said, who is going to go in and take their information? They looked at me, Pastor, it's impossible. You can't even go in. So there were thousands and thousands and thousands of people who cried and repented. It's not just about salvation. Look at the repentance. Look at the repentance. Look at the repentance. Deep repentance took place. Souls were connected back to God. That's what happened. And in the midst of that, there was a shift in the spiritual atmosphere. How do I know? Well, I'll give you three incidents that tells us there was a shift in the spiritual atmosphere. The first one occurred the day after. Now, you can run an event, but in the event, everything happens. And if after the event, nothing happens, then there's not much shift that has taken place. It's just been a wonderful event. But the good news was, as the event went on, there was a shift in the spiritual atmosphere. And it's not just about the event. It's about the shift. So one of the things that happened was on Monday, well, some schools nearby in that area had come to that whole gathering. And um, 20,000, I, I really don't know how many people. It was just so packed, so packed that even the roads were filled with people. How many of you went to Sabah just as a show of hands? Well, the next time you all must go. But it's very hard to tell you what happened. You have to be there to feel the heat and the crowd and the grass and, and the squashness, you know, we're very squashed. And as we went out there, one thing that happened was the schools, the, the children came in, the teachers came. On Monday, there was some, a school in Penampang. This is just one of the many stories that we're trying to get back. So as they went to Penampang, back to the schools, these teachers who had been to the PJB 17, it was supposed to be their Monday uh, assembly day, but the headmaster didn't turn up. And lo and behold, a boy who had not gone to BJB 17, he had just had an operation, came in looking rather sick. And do you know what? There was a shift. The teachers and the students who had gone to the PJB 17 began to say, let's pray for him. And lo and behold, they started praying for him. And not only that, it didn't stop there. The spirit in them was one of revival. The spirit in them was one of hope. The spirit in them was one of joy. The spirit in them was one of faith. Amen? So they said, how many of you are sick? When these students put their hands up and he began to pray for them and you know what he said good job the headmaster didn't come to school today <laughs> wow what an awesome things and you know what else happened we even begin to hear that after that people went back to their villages i'll just tell you one incident because another one just came in only last week about the whole kampong has a shift in atmosphere but i'll tell you of one that i know a little bit more certain it happened in Ranau. As the people came to BJB 17 and they encountered God and they had come before God and there was a shift in that atmosphere, they went back to Ranau and they began to hold their own mini revival meetings every night for one week. Awesome, isn't it? Awesome. And you know what happened? In that revival meeting, because some of them only had been to PJB 17, but tons and tons and tons of people from the villages and from the area of Ranau came into these meetings every night. And you know what? They didn't want to leave. Not like us, our oh, 12.30 must leave or they want. No! They wanted to stay. They stayed up to 2 a.m., 3 a.m. And people just repented and cried and worshipped God. Isn't that revival? Amen! God is doing a work. God is doing a work. There's victory in the heavenlies. Amen? That is what God is doing. And not only that, this is the macro level. What about the micro level? The micro level can be in terms of just simple things that happen to us. So I'm going to show you a picture of a girl. Now, isn't this amazing? She's from Ipoh. Did you know coming to PJB 17 were people from Ipoh? I was so like, how did you come? So actually, I met, and she's not the one I met. I met another whole family, mother and two children came to Ipoh, from Ipoh. They said they came to PJB 17 because of E16. You see, E16 was a pre precursor to PJB 17. Never diminish God's work. 
never look down on what God is doing in this season. Whereas whatever He's doing in one season of your life is a preparation for the next season. Amen? You want to see the God of peace trample Satan underneath your feet? It doesn't happen just because of one event. It doesn't happen just because of one day. It happens as a result of years of preparation. Amen? And so God was preparing something. And here was a girl from Ipoh, all the way from Ipoh, sorry, all the way from Ipoh. And as she comes into this event, there are 20 to 30,000 people in this event. You must understand that. She lost her camera. Now, how big is her camera, this tiny little thing? Long? But you know something about this girl? Because when the atmosphere has shifted, she was not depressed. She was not going to say, I'm not going to go anymore. I lost my camera. God is so bad. She didn't. She actually was so joyful. But she posted it on Facebook that she had lost this camera. Don't know what camera it was. She posted it on Facebook. And lo and behold, wonderful thanks to our Facebook social media coordinator, Miranda. You see, there are lots of people behind all these stories, right? She picked it up. She says Facebook and social media is not just about social media. It's capturing what's happening. She captured this information. She immediately began to contact uh, this man here. And I really don't know his name. You know, uh, one thing about Romans chapter 16, I've got names that are unpronounceable one. Sospita la, Erastus la, Quatrus la. I don't know what name. La. So he has got one of those names. Do you know... <laughs> One of those names, <laughs> all right. But you know something? When, when, when Miranda contacted the organizers, or rather the coordinators, the back-end people, she's so important, the back-end people who never even see the front end, they are working behind the, behind the scenes in the tiny rooms in, in, in Sabah. This man says, hey, I found a camera. Someone handed me back this camera. What are the chances in a crusade of 40,000 people, and a lot of them poor people, to hand you back a camera? Don't say poor or rich, right? It's just, it's impossible. Even if they, if, even if dumb, nobody took it, you couldn't find it. It could be under the chairs or somewhere. But someone found it and gave it back. What is this? And that's why they had to have a camera giving back ceremony. <laughs> I mean, this is awesome. And you know something on top of it? Miranda, she don't have nice selfie stick because I think she's not selfie girl. She went and borrowed those exotic selfie stick. Must be from you. <laughs> All the selfie ladies sitting there, Doreen and company, must be from them. One. She borrowed this amazing selfie stick, but she lost it in a grab car. But because there was a shift in the spiritual atmosphere, nobody wanted to steal anything. The grab car driver gave it back to her. Returned it back to her. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? That's called a shift in spiritual atmosphere. How many of you remember, Pastor just reminded me, this year was also Heidi Baker's conference. Do you remember that? Yeah. And do you remember we had many handbags lost? But not one of the handbags got really lost. All was returned. Why? Because there's a shift in spiritual atmosphere. Turn to your friend and say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That's what we need in our city. That's what we need in our churches. That's what we need in our homes. A shift in spiritual atmosphere. And when there's a shift in spiritual atmosphere, the community is transformed. The nation becomes transformed. However, does all this come just by itself? No. All this comes, sorry, there's a slide before that. All this comes because there is a road that we need to take. I want to mention one thing about the verse, the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. It means this, God does not do it independent of us and we don't crush Satan independent of God. Got it? The God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath our feet means God will do his part, we must do our part. Amen? It is the working together of God's people with their God that brings victory in the heavenly. So everybody say this after me. When I work alongside God, God is able to bring victory in my life. Amen? It's not about you totally depend, you, you do nothing, you just sit there and God does everything. It's not about that. Or God does nothing and we do everything. It doesn't work that way. So the road to victory requires also outside. And on outside, there are three points about it. 
the road to victory for us as a church, for us as Christians, for us as believers, requires three points. The first is there must be a proclamation of the gospel of peace. Everybody say, proclaim the gospel of peace. If we want to see peace in the world, it starts with us talking, sharing, proclaiming the gospel of peace to our friends, to our neighbours, to our loved ones, to our families, to anyone that we see. Secondly, we must also learn prayer and spiritual warfare is critical. Amen? Everybody said prayer and spiritual warfare. And the third thing which is very, very important, so important that Pastor Chu is going to do a whole sermon about the power of people working together is called people power or the power of synergy of God's people coming together to do something. This is the three keys that will give us a road to victory. Now, let me start with this sentence. Why is there no peace in this world? You know, it's a very good question because Paul himself begins to say in Romans chapter 3, he says this, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There's no one who understands. There's no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. And there's no one who does good. No, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. And the poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. And their feet are swift to shed blood. Indeed, ruin and misery mark their ways. And the way of peace they do not know. The reason why there is no peace in this world is that we actually do not know the way of peace. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Without Jesus' way, there is nobody knows the way of peace. So just imagine, just imagine now we're going through circumstances in our family life, we're going through circumstances maybe in our working life, or even just amongst each other in cells or in communities. Imagine a situation where, imagine a situation where no one seeks God. No one is interested in God. Everyone is just fighting. Everyone is just interested in themselves. When we do not seek God, we also do not know what is good. We cannot separate good from error, right from wrong. So we're just doing our own thing. And when we do our own thing, very often, bitterness, cursing, ill feeling creeps into us. So if you're looking for peace, you're looking for victory, in your family life, if no one in the family knows God, no one in the family is at peace in their hearts with God, actually there will only be a lot of bitterness. And because of the bitterness, there is cursing, there is deceit, there is no goodness can take place. That is why the Apostle Paul says, if you do not know God, you will not know the way of peace. And that is why it is only the gospel of peace Unless we proclaim the gospel, only the gospel of peace can give peace with God. Amen? Why don't we just say this sentence? The gospel of peace gives us peace with God. And let's just read this, uh, sorry, let's just read this sentence in Romans 5. In Romans 5, let's just read this. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. I want to say this, brothers and sisters, very often when we become a Christian, we take our Christian faith just for granted. We don't really know why it is so important. Do you know something? You know, even as I was worshipping the last few days and as I was thinking about this, why do we need to have peace with God? When we do not have peace with God, we have actually a sense that we are un our lives, what is it all about? We don't feel accepted, we don't feel wanted, we don't even feel loved. So there's no one to give us that peace of being wanted, of being accepted, of being loved. But when you have peace with God because of Jesus Christ, what happens is that there is a relationship with God. And suddenly, God loves you. You know, when we have peace with God, Romans 5 says we have access, we have entrance. It's as if the whole of heaven has opened. When you have peace with God, heaven comes down. And because heaven comes down, we know we are accepted by God. We know we are loved by God. We know we are wanted by God. Amen? How many of you know you have experienced you are loved by God, you are wanted by God, and you are accepted by God? Come on. 
And you know, I'm serious about this. If you have not known this properly, please come to the altar afterwards. We really want to share this with you. It is absolutely essential that you know that God is on your side, not against you. Amen? Amen. The best news about the gospel of peace. If you want to go and share the gospel to anyone, just tell them, receive the Lord Jesus Christ so that God can be on your side. Amen. And if God is with you, who can be against you? Amen. If God is with us, who can be against us? The reason why there's no peace in the world is that we think everybody is against us. That's why there's so much fights. And that's why when we have the peace of God, or rather when we have peace with God, we will have the peace of God. Even families, can I just say this? Until you spend more time to understand that God loves you, that God accepts you, that God is for you, actually, husbands and wives will fight. You fight because you, want, you think that you are more right than the other person. You want to be more accepted than the other person. The key is still, God loves me. God wants me. God is for me. So I don't care about my husband. He, he don't know, I don't care. Lah. But God is for me. Amen? And there comes a peace into us. And when that peace comes, relationships can be at peace. Which is why I love what John Stott said. Uh, not John Stott, Billy Graham said. Billy Graham said this. This peace is something Christ secured to what he did for us in his identification with sinful man on the cross. It is not just a feeling. This is not, peace is not a feeling. It's not a calm feeling that we as believers have. It is the result of the eternal victory that Christ won over sin and death. It far exceeds weak human emotion and experience. What a powerful statement. It's just so much in this. You have to unravel this. You have to go back. When you go back into yourself, discuss this. What actually is this peace that God wants to give us? What is this meaning? The peace with God gives us this amazing peace that exceeds our human feelings. It's our feelings that gets ruffled, that causes us to be at war. Truly. But when the peace of God is not just a feeling, it's an eternal victory. So everybody say, the God of peace brings the gospel of peace. Only Pastor Chu said it. Everybody says, the God of peace brings the gospel of peace so that I have peace with God. And now I have the peace of God. Amen? Long sentence, but it's a good sentence. The God of peace. How does the God of peace crush Satan underneath our feet? The God of peace bring, gives me the gospel of peace so that I have peace with God, that the, now the God of peace and the peace of God can stay inside my heart. And that's why we don't need to fight. Amen? Amen? If you agree with me, say amen. amen. Now let's on, move on to the next point. Remember, there are three points about the road to victory. The first point is the importance of the gospel of peace. Proclaim it, understand it, uh, re receive it, practice it, all right? The gospel of peace. The second thing is that prayer and fasting. I don't think PJB 17 and indeed all the other events in our church and all the other things that's happening in our church would have occurred if it had not been for a few years of training the church to fast and to pray. I think one of the major things that's happened in Malaysia is that people are praying. Amen? Come on, you're not excited. People are praying. Not only you and me, you know, say amen. amen. I'll tell you some incidents about praying people, not just in SIB. I was so astounded when I went to Malacca. We went to Malacca and we found that there's this group of men. Wow, everybody say men, okay? We men especially say men. These men woke up for 20 years every Saturday morning and they pray from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. on the mountain in Malacca. All the women said, wow, and the men said nothing. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? A group of men, 20 years, they never failed. They said, even if it rained, we would stand there to pray. Isn't that awesome? Something shifts when prayer is going on. Amen? 
And, and another amazing story that I just heard only two days ago. Did you know that even as we are praying, there are people praying all over Malaysia for different parts of Malaysia. And there's a group in Johor. And this group in Johor is amazing. They pray. They don't just pray in a location. If God says, pray for the south, then they stay in Johor Bahru to pray. Then God says, go to the north. Then they went to Penang to pray. And I don't, they didn't go to Sabah, Sarawak, but they prayed. Lah. But you know what happened? So a Singaporean friend of Pastor Chu, whom he has not met for the last six years, has decided to pray for Malaysia. So he joins this Johor prayer group. Praise God for the Singaporeans. Amen, amen. Come on, praise God for the Singaporeans. Yeah. So this man was telling him, hey, do you know something? On September the 3rd, as we were praying for Malaysia, God made us pray for Sabah and Sarawak. And as we were praying for Sabah, your face appeared before me. That's what happens when you pray, yeah, some faces appear, yeah. And uh, your face appeared before me, and as we prayed, and as we prayed for you and for Saba, I saw thousands of people coming to receive Jesus Christ. I saw a huge rally. Come on, that's September the 3rd. And the most important thing is that this group doesn't know us at all. Even this man, he has not been in contact with Pastor Chu for six years. And he said, what were you doing in Sabah? He asked Pastor Chu. <laughs> September the 3rd, he begins to war. God begins to train people, tell his people, war for Sabah. You see, it's not just us, huh? These people were warring. And he didn't know that we were going to organize something on September the 15th and 16th. You know, it's just amazing. And I want to share this with you. Prayer and fasting is essential if we are going to partner with God. Prayer is not about twisting God's arm, asking for things. Prayer is that direct communication with God. And I want to really go back to this slide because prayer gives you watchfulness and obedience. How does that happen? Because as you pray, there is a focus that comes into us and we're not focusing on PJB. In fact, do you know, if you had been to our 40 days of prayer and fasting, if you came to much of my altars, I hardly ever pray for PJB. But what are we doing? We are focusing on God. What is God saying to us at this time? And as we focus on Him, do you know what happens? Jesus said this of Martha. Martha, Martha, you are troubled and distracted about many things. One of the biggest problems in the church is that we are doing, 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 but we are troubled and distracted by our doing. But we are not like Mary. But Jesus then said, but Mary has chosen the good part. What is the good part? The good part is connecting with God. Through prayer, spending time with God, listening to God, having focus. And as he, she did that, she began to know what was going to happen to Jesus. And as we did that, we could begin to have a focus. We were no longer, there were so many obstacles. Do you know that? To PJB 17. I'll tell you this one truth about PJB 17. After that, don't go and tell the whole world. Because the truth is this. As we started organizing it at the beginning of the year, Every month, you must give, really give thanks to God for Pastor Lindy. Come on, really give. Really, when you see her, thank her. But she was the one that had to tip, and, and a small team of six people, they actually ran most of the stuff, the ground stuff, and it was tough. There was so much opposition. There was so much, they just couldn't get it. There was so much despair. Every time she comes back and she attends our senior pastoral meeting, remember Pastor Vergus, we, we listened to her, and then Pastor Chu and I and Lindy would say, if this is going to work, it has to be God. It's not going to work. Every time she comes back, we say, it won't work. Do you know something? I better confess my sins together with my husband. My husband soon needs to confess. Many times, at least five to six times, we wanted to cancel the event because it was so tough. It was so tough. Honestly, it was so tough to do. It was just impossible to do. We wanted to cancel the event. So you know what? It came to a point, right, where the event, the venue that we had booked was Lika Stadium and it was told that we could not have it there and that was only one month before the actual event. One month before the event, we had already paid the deposit for Lika Stadium. We were told you cannot have it there. We had to. So we looked at it. We were on holiday, Pastor Chu and I. And when we were on holiday, we were on holiday. But here comes a text. Pastor Chu, 
make a decision now. This venue has, we can no longer have it in Likas. What must we do? That was the message from Pastor Lindy. Pastor Chu and I looked at each other. We have so many problems, so many obstacles. I think we cancel the event. Nah? <laughs> wow, immediately my burdens were lifted at Calvary. <laughs> but so easy, right? Everything cancelled. Hi, yeah. I, then we said, I think it is God's will. But because it's a season of prayer and fasting, you see, prayer gives you focus. Prayer gives you revelation. Prayer gives you understanding. Only when you have focus and revelation and understanding that you have the faith to obey. Do you know that? Praise God for, praise God for the people of Sabah who said, no, you cannot cancel. We're going to look for another event, another venue. And lo and behold, they found Penampang. And that's another story. I'll come back to it. But I want to talk about prayer and fasting. Go back to that slide on prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting enables us to focus and to see this thing called God's timing and plans. It was indeed God's plans and timing to have it in Sabah. Because one of the things we discovered, you know, I, during that 40 days of prayer and fasting, I took a team of my team leaders up to the prayer, uh, to Peace Haven to pray for 24 hours. Pastor Gilbert was amazing. He did night, overnight altars, 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. Every night he was there with 14 other people. Okay, instead of clapping, I suggest he's continuing, you know, 12 to 3 a.m. I suggest some of you go and join her. Huh? Uh, he's still doing it, 12 to 3 a.m. But I tell you what, in the midst of all that prayer, God revealed why he shifted the venue from Likas to Penampang. Because here was one night in the overnight prayer, and Pastor Gilbert comes up with this amazing understanding. Penampang is the seat of occultism. And Pastor Chu has shared that with you all. It's the seat of spiritual de- worship that the natives have tied themselves to the evil spirits, to the spirits of the land that God intend to break. Wow. Wow. When we heard that, and when, we, when I took my team leaders up to Peace Haven to pray, God revealed even more. He says, when the spirit of the native people is able to break away from being linked back to the ancestral spirits of the land that their forefathers, before they knew God, is worshipped. If they can break that, revival will come. That was what God actually said to us at Peace Haven. And that's why I knew we were not in an ordinary warfare. I tell you, I knew we really had to fast and pray. But I knew it was also about God's timing. Remember, the God of peace is the one that's going to crush, not us. We just need to obey. Amen? Keep that slide on, please, because I need to talk more. And I want to tell you something about God's revelation. In that 40 days, it's not just about that 40 days. Earlier on in the year, I had went to, Sky, I went to Sabah, and two years ago, I'd already gone to Sabah and told Sabah, we will train you on building prayer altars. And earlier this year, I'd gone to SIB Likas and I'd trained them on prayer altars. And I said to them, PJB is just an event. I'm not interested in the event. I'm interested in a process that allows God of victory to come to Sabah. And so I'm going to say to you, can you prepare your people to fast and to pray, to go to Penampang and do prayer walks and begin to possess your territory and come and we will come, to, I will bring a team of 40 of my prayer people up to Sabah and we will join you to pray for one week from the 11th right up to the 15, 16. We will join you. Do you know that is the plans of God? I would not have wanted to do it on my own, but somehow God encouraged us to do that. And do you know what's critical? Because I'll tell you what happened. You and I from West Malaysia do not know the sins of the land that is really possessing the land, that gives a right for Satan to rule over land. Incidentally, prayer is when God opens your spiritual eyes to show us, to show you and to show me the sins that prevents God from answering your prayers. There are sins that prevents God from answering our prayers. And when we went there, and even when we went to Peace Haven, one of the major sins, and we had to repent. In fact, Pastor Jimmy said, Every, semua orang sebo untuk PJB, tetapi tidak ada masa untuk berdoa. That's a major sin. 
When we were in Peace Haven, when the prayer altars and my prayer captains, one of the major problems God said to us, and we had to spend the whole morning repenting before God. One of the major problems is this. Pastors, leaders, I don't care what Christians, God said, you can be busy doing things, but it's no use. If you do not partner with God, if you do not seek God's face, you can work till the cows come home, you are going to be defeated. You know why? Because only God knows how to bring in the victory. Amen? Only God knows how to train us, how to war train my hands for war and my fingers for battle. That is my cry when I pray. God, how do we battle this huge demonic stronghold in Penampang? How are we going to do that? And you know, God says, you have to repent. Your people are just... Doing, 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 but never seeking, 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 seeking. Can I humbly say this to you? The most important thing about a church, about a Christian, about a leader, about a pastor, is not your doing. It's the time you spend with God. That is critical. That is what gives you the strength. Without God, Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Ile, zero, kosong. That's what God made us repent. We spent a lot of time Church, pastors, leaders, SDLs, zone leaders, we spend a lot of time crying to God about that. It's still breaking God's heart. Do you know how, do you know something? I'll give you just a very simple thought. Do you know why Taiwan changed? Taiwan changed because 300 pastors every year gather for three days just to seek the Lord. Nothing, no agenda, just seek the Lord. In Malaysia, we can't even get 10 pastors to come to do that. Can't even get that. And that breaks God's heart. Second thing we needed to repent of. We needed to repent of this sin called syncretism. What is syncretism? Syncretism is where you believe in God, but you're still holding back your idolatry and your past practices. One of the major problems of the people in, 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 in Sabah, in Sabah and Sarawak, of the natives is this. Even as they are Christians, even as they come to know God, even as they put their trust in God, do you know something? Many of them still have acts of occultism. They still keep spirits in their homes. They still worship the spirits in, during funerals. They still do that. There was a just continuing worship. Or they may not say they are worshipping. There was a continuing linkages to the spirits of the land. And you know, as we came together with SIB Sabah, SIB Likas, SIB Skyline, and SIB KL. As we came and, and we began to seek the Lord, as we began to repent, God began to reveal, this has to be repented. And do you know something? Praise God for our wonderful native brothers and sisters. They just came and they cried and they cried and they repented, God, we have sinned against you. Now, those people praying may not have done it, but when you pray for your family, you may not have done that sin, but you need to pray on behalf of them as if you have done it, just like Nehemiah, just like Daniel. So they began to pray and they cried and, and they even cried in their own language, which was so deep. We spent the whole of one day just doing that. Whole of one day just doing that. Seeking the Lord for forgiveness for our syncretistic worship. That means we worship God, but also we worship other things. Oh, it was an awesome day. Then there came the next thing that we had to do, reconciliation amongst brothers. Until the people of God are at peace with one another, the God of peace cannot crush Satan underneath our feet. Of course, the God of peace can crush Satan underneath his feet, but not underneath our feet. One of the most amazing things about PJB 17 is this. Do you know that actually the original English church in SIB, Sabah, was started way back in the 1980s, all right, early 1980s. And the three elders were Pastor Chu, Pastor Philip, at that time all not pastors, lah. Pastor Chu, Pastor Philip, and Pastor Jerry. Do you know that for 30 years now, since we left Sabah in 1993, all three churches had never come together to do an event together. Do you know God was just so amazing? Because of PJB 17, we drew together SIB Likas, SIB Skyline, and SIB Pusat. That means SIB Sabah and SIB KL. And as God brought us all together, do you know one of the things we had to do? Repent of any ill feeling towards each other. Asking for forgiveness from one another, having offended one another. Why is that essential? If you do not do that, the God of peace cannot come because there's no peace amongst men. 
And so we had a lot of reconciliation. In fact, one of the, in the, in the reconciliations, uh, people had to, and, and SIB Light, Skylight and Likas, they had to do a, some major reconciliation. And not only that, on the final day, September the 15th morning, God said to us, one more major act of reconciliation you must do if you want to go into this event. And that's the reconciliation between East Malaysia and West Malaysia. Now, it's very critical. The whole event is held on Malaysia Day. And, you know, something was happening in Likas. But God says, it's not about them, it's about you. You as West Malaysians, do you know, you think you are so clever, you are so organized, you are so efficient, as far as the East Malaysians are concerned, they call it oppression. Now, this is my words, all right? They may not say it exactly, but do you know Chinese also? We tend to put down the natives. We tend to call them by certain names. Do you know the Spirit of God began to say to me, you need to stand and um, uh, you need to get your West Malaysian people and begin to ask the East Malaysian for forgiveness that we have looked down on them, that we have caused them to feel small and intimidated. You know something? I want to tell you a truth about East Malaysians and West Malaysians. East Malaysians absolutely hate West Malaysians because they think you are just so grand, you come to oppress them, you come to introduce efficiency. You know, I'm very efficient, man, you know. But that's not the point. The point is they needed to feel, they, did, they don't feel loved. They don't feel loved. And you know that morning, it was a powerful morning. My prayer teams was there and we took the West Malaysians. We only had one East Malaysian girl in our midst, Sharon Simeon. And we asked and there was repentance and there was forgiveness and there was reconciliation. And you know when Sharon cried out, in Bahasa, she cried and she cried. Memang Tuhan, kita benci itu orang daripada semenanjung. You should hear those cries. But you know something? The God of peace was about to bring victory. Do you know what happened after PJB 17? Sharon tells us that it was amazing. Because of PJB 17, and they saw the way USIBKL went all the way, never even eat, never even sit down, sit in dirty grass, wet grass, in the rain, and serve them. Because of all that y'all did, do you know what happened? They hugged many of us. So many came to hug Pastor Chiu and me. So many hugged you all also. And they said, Ayo, terima kasih, terima kasih. Thank you so much for coming to help us, for loving us. Do you know what uh, Sharon said? They suddenly, the atmosphere broke through. They knew that West Malaysians love East Malaysians. Come on, come on. You know something? Very often, we assume too much of ourselves. But when the God of peace comes, He needs us to humble ourselves and repent and to seek reconciliation. Not who is right. It's, it's God that's going to bring victory. You can be right and still not have victory. But God was about to bring victory. Amen? Amen? That's what happened. And honestly, you know, I just want to show you these pictures because I have never, I've been in prayer for a long time now, but I've never entered into a warfare in the spiritual realm, so intense as PJB 17. And that's why I'm sharing with you these stories, which I believe is not just for PJB 17, it's for any other war, uh, spiritual warfare that God should draw us into. And I'm not a great interpreter of clouds, okay? I don't have the gift of interpretation of clouds. In fact, I just want to share with you this. You see, when our prayer teams went into the Penampang Stadium and begin to do prayer walks, uh, and the, the, the BM section was the most powerful, the SIB Sabah section. Do you know they had youths coming in to pray in the middle of the night? And they had people coming to pray. They would sit in the Penampang Stadium all night to pray. All night. They prayed through the night. We in uh, SIB Skyline, Likas, and SIB KL, we did the day watches. We're very smart one. We do from 9 to uh, 6 o'clock. Then they do after that 7 till next morning. So we did that. And do you know one of, uh, uh, a lot of them they began to share with me, they could see spirits engulfing the whole of the stadium. Strong spirits. In fact, they even told me, they told Pastor Chok, please tell Pastor Lee Chu, better cover our teams, better cover yourself because they are chanting and they are having a prayer meeting. You are having prayer meeting, they are having prayer meeting. They are prayer meeting. The Bomos, the witches, you know, Penampang is a seat of witchcraft. The Bomos, the Penam witch creatures, they have called a prayer meeting to bring down rain. I've never understood the battle of rain. Wow. So guess what? So they see demons doing that. 
So I tell you one thing very beautiful about understanding prayer. Huh? You don't need to see demons one. So in our prayer group, so you have Pastor Lily and Pastor Nancy Lin. Nancy Lin is Philip Lin's wife. Lily is Lily Dusin's wife and me, right? So we are in prayer, right? Plus Pastor Jimmy. So I said to them, Pastor Nancy is another one, climbed Mount Kinabalu and saw the demons of Saba staring at her. So I said to her, Nancy, you see the demons. Lily, you are the one that waged spiritual warfare. I only see Jesus. I'll tell you the truth. That's been my focus. What prayer does to me is give me that focus, all right? So I'm going to tell you this because I don't know what all this is about. But the prayer people tell me this. If I click, will it appear? No, it didn't appear, Ma. Your red point, Namana. Okay. People tell me, look at these dark clouds. The battle for rain was very intense. For the few days before PJB 17, it was raining thunder. And, and Pastor Lindy showed Pastor Chu. Weather forecast. I'm glad yesterday uh, Victor G said prophecy is not forecast. Yeah. Weather forecast. Thunderstorm on 16, 15 and 16. Pastor Chu don't want to tell me, praise God. Because I only see Jesus, don't see forecast. But you know, it was such a battle. Then on the 15th, on the actual day, the morning was bright. And he says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Nice, bright sky, wonderful, praise the Lord. Our prayers are answered. Huh. Except that when we went to the stadium, it started to drizzle. And the clouds started to form. And they were black clouds. And then in the midst of this, my wonderful prayer people interpret to me, this is demonic. I don't know, lah, ask them. Lah. But do you know something? As we, began, as we just continued with that event, focused, prayerful, worshipful, even as we did that, wow, something else appeared in heaven. Look at this. Again, you can't interpret. This one I can interpret for you. This one's a huge angel. By the sword. Do you see that? Ah, you don't see, never mind. Lah. Just see Jesus, okay? Just see Jesus. I also didn't see. I also didn't see. They showed me after that. But I'll tell you what happened on the first night. On the first night, the drizzle came. And as the drizzle came, it went on even as the event had started. Even as the event started, they were trying to hold umbrellas for us. It was drizzling. And, and the traffic jam was so bad. We caused a traffic jam in Kota Kinabalu. Can you imagine that? The traffic jam was so bad. Philip Mentofa was late by about an hour. But do you know what happened? The worship leader from Indonesia was amazing. Single-handedly, one guitar, one voice. He just worshipped. And when he worshipped, and when we worshipped alongside, as we sang, hallelujah, hallelujah, literally, literally in my spirit realm, I saw thousands of thousands of this size angels appearing in my, in my, in my whole understanding. It was a such glory. And do you know something? As we worshipped, the rain completely stopped. No rain. No rain. Honestly, PJB 17 is powerful. But I want to thank you all who prayed, who didn't go there, but who prayed. Amen? All of you who prayed, say amen. amen. Whether you prayed in, uh, in, 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 in say, this sanctuary too, uh, this is not Melawati, uh, this is not Penampang, uh, this is sanctuary too. And I tell you what y'all did. As you saw the thing going, you were just praying, praying, you don't know what was happening. But as you prayed, you became, I heard you got more and more fervent because your spirit could catch what God was doing. That's why you became more and more fervent. Amen? The reason why you got excited is that in the spirit realm, you knew you had to engage. And that's why some more Pastor Fergus so merciless did not turn on the sound because if he turned on the sound, then you're all so excited about what's happening. He turned it soft so that you would focus on praying. But do you know something? As you prayed, the angels appeared. Wow, well, you're not excited. As you prayed, the angels appeared. Those angels that I so showed you earlier. And the God of peace was winning a victory in Penampang. That's what happened. Amen? But I want to tell you this. The road to victory is not just prayer, not just the gospel, but the power of God's people coming together. Look at these people that came together. Look at them. I actually don't know all these teams. These are the ushering teams. These are, I also don't know what team. I think it is, don't know what team uh. I think production team. This one really don't know what team. I think Shofar team. And I don't really don't know what team they are. They came from all over. They came from SIBKL. Do you know what's wonderful about SIBKL? Before they went, they actually, uh, and unfortunately, this is very funny, right? SIBKL brought more older people. Lah. And CYC brought all the youth. So they said, SIBKL sends out the aunties and uncles. 
And CYC sent out their youths. But it didn't matter. There was such a synergy. The aunties and uncles could guide the youths, you see. Right? Yeah, Adele was saying. And you know something? It was such a powerful synergy. SIB Penam, uh, Likas, SIB BM all started to work. And the amazing thing about SIB KL was this. Not a single complaint. And I'll tell you why that's significant. Because they had to sit on grass. And the grass is wet. And do you know before that, one of our zone leaders said, no wonder revival can only come in Sabah. Because in Sabah, we have to sit on the grass. And the grass is wet. And we have no chance to go and get food. We are uh, stuck in here. If it's happened in KL, they sure go home already. <laughs> this is what happened. This is what happened. So I want to thank all of you in SIBKL. You did such a good job. The power of synergy. The power of people working together. Pastor Chu will share more about that. But let me close. Three lessons I learned. If we want to see the God of peace crush Satan underneath our feet. If we want to see that happen in your home situation. If you want to see that happen in your community. If you want to see that happen in our church. If you want to see that happen in Malaysia. There must be three important things that must happen. This is what I saw. I felt God say this to me. Look at the hunger of the people. Do you know the people went to the stadium at 2.30 p.m. and they had, do you know some of them travel by foot? Some people, a group of people actually walked six miles to reach the stadium. Another group of people, I mean many, it's not even a group, many of them came in the daytime, went back at night, and you know the traffic jam was two hours just to get up, two to three hours just to get up. They would have reached Ranau, they would have reached Tenom, they would have reached uh, whatever, at least 3 a.m., right? After the stadium, they still came back the next day. We actually were amazed at the crowd because people were so hungry for God that they were determined nothing could stop them from coming to see God. Amen? Do you want to see Satan trampled underneath your feet in your homes? You and I need to be hungry for God. Not hungry for events, incidentally. Not hungry for events. An event is just an excuse for God to train us. Amen? Task equals cask. That's the teaching of SIBKL. Every event is about the process, not about the event. And so God is saying to us, if you want to see changes in your family, you want to see changes in your community, you want to see changes in our nation, you want to see changes in your own life, are you hungry to seek God? Will you stop praying now just because the 40 days are over? Or will you continue to hunger after God and to seek His face and to gaze upon Him in His temple? Are you continuing to be hungry for God? Because these people were hungry for God. Look at that. Rain. They still came. Do you know what? This is heavy rain on the 16th. On the 16th, it rained even more. Even more on the 16th. And I'll tell you a bit more. But look at them. Look at their hunger. It was the hunger that caused God to really be able to really fill their... You know, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. The second thing that is so important, even as we want to learn about the God of peace, crushing Satan, bringing victory to us in the heavenlies, we must learn to exalt God in worship. Now, let me just share this. I want to talk about this. On the 14th night, all of us were gathered to really be briefed on what's happening on the 15th and 16th. And on the 14th night, as we were gathered to be briefed on what's happening on 15th and 16th, normal thing, the rain came so torrentially that we actually had to run from the field. Do you know some people actually never moved from the field, but they were told, no, we won't brief you, just go into the, uh, go into the, 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 the covering and just see whether the rain goes. But do you know something? As we went into the covering area, one of the, the main uh, pastor that was in Sabah, that was leading the, the whole logistics section, Pastor Didymus, he just began to break out into worship. How great thou art, how great thou art. He sang, then sings my soul, my Savior God. To thee he sang and strong, how great thou art, how great, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God. 
to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. How great thou art. He sang almost for half an hour and all of us, I was trying to brief my team, I turned around, I too began to worship, all of us began to worship in, in English, in BM, in Kadazai, I don't know what language. The rain stopped. There's a thunderstorm. It just stopped. I want to say this. I think we have not understood worship. Worship is the most powerful thing that a Christian can do. And worship is not singing songs. Worship is worship. You know you have touched the kingdom of heaven when you have worship. And that's why can I plead with you, don't treat worship lightly. In fact, next year, we're going to do a few sermons about worship. I saw the power of worship. I saw it when the Indonesian worship leader, single-handedly, while the rain was coming down, he just sang. He sang. It's not about the songs. Huh? It's about the worship. Huh? And I actually, Pastor Chiu didn't understand why I suddenly kneeled. I knelt in that wet ground, in that mud, because praise God had come. When you worship, the God of peace is in our midst. That's why we worship. We worship. And do you know something? I want to add one more thing. You see, it's a war between a God of peace and the demon spirits that was determined to wreck the place. As we worship, people told me that the, the spirit, the, 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 the bomos were inside chanting, not just rain, which I knew, they were chanting death. They had actually come amongst our people. Do you know, as the altar call was happening, the Bomos went to some of the young people and wanted to lay hands on them. Praise God for the Indonesian intercessors. They were so alert. Pull them away. And, and as I was praying, as I was about to begin, Pastor Lily Dusings comes to me and says, they are chanting death. And so a lot of people say, what do we do? What do we do? Now listen carefully. That's why we need to be alert, prayed up. Do you know what I did? They are here, right? The God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath our feet. They are chanting death. What do we chant? Life. Life. So I gathered Pastor uh, Gilbert, Pastor Chalk, and a few other people. I said, now is the time. Let's pray for their salvation. Tonight, they will hear the gospel of peace. Tonight, they will understand life. They will not understand death. They will see life. And the whole shattering of the heavens will appear before them. Do you know something? It's just amazing, right? On one of the altar call slips was an ex-Bobo Hizan. <laughs> How do we win this war of victory? I want to end by this powerful statement. Let's go back to that slide. A hung, everybody say, a hunger for God. Now, not a hunger for events, all right? Not a hunger for events, a hunger for God. Exalting God in worship, everybody say. Do you know when there's worship, there's exaltation of God. And finally, it is the goodness and mercy of God. And I want to end by this. On the second day, on the 16th, the rain came even heavier. But the rain stopped after we prayed and the event started. But even though I, was, I knew there was no more rain, there were little drops of rain that would fall on one part of me throughout the whole night. And throughout the whole night, I was conscious of the spiritual battle. I was very conscious of it. Actually, I, don't, I wasn't conscious of the stage. This whole thing made me very conscious of the spiritual battle. And even as I began to be conscious that there was a war in the heavenlies, I began to say, Lord, what must I do to make sure the rain really don't come? Because it can come anytime, anytime the rain can come. Because we have seen it's a rainy season. Anytime it can come. And I said, what is it? Do you pray more? But Lord, we have prayed already. Do you fast more? I've already finished the end of the 40 days. Do, do we do more? What do we do? Do we worship more? What do we do? Do you know something? Do you know what something? God said to me, it's not about you alone. It's not about you alone. It's not about a you because you prayed so much, you fasted so much, you did so much. It's not about you alone. It's about me. It's my goodness and my mercy. And do you know what? Throughout the whole night of September the 16th, I don't know what y'all were doing. I just stood there and said, Lord, how good is our God. Your mercy endureth forever. Lord, forgive us because of our sins. But you are merciful of God. And this wonderful verse in Ephesians came to me. 
God who is rich in mercy. Amen. And because of His great love, He has raised us up to be seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. That's why the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath amen. your feet. Amen. amen. If you believe that, say amen. 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 And let me show you this picture. Let me show you this last picture. Do you know, September 15, September 16, we all rejoiced. 30, 40,000 people went, 6, 7,000 people received the Lord, many healings, whatever, whatever. The next morning is September, the, after 16th is what? Uh, oh, 17th, okay. I woke up, Pastor Chu had gone on to church. I wasn't lazy, I had to speak in the afternoon. So I woke up at 6, 9 a.m. and behold, look at the storm clouds. It was only 9 a.m. in the morning. Over Kota Kinabalu, it was like, the, what's that, that film called? Uh? That, that Independence Day. Look at that. Suddenly the clouds were darkened and the storm broke out. I was looking out over Sutra Harbour. It was just down, began to lash. And the Lord spoke into my spirit. This is what I sheltered you from. Is He not merciful? Is He not merciful? Is He not merciful? Hey! God is good, amen. Amen. amen, and His love endures forever. That's why we are assured of victory. We are assured of victory because God is good. Come on, stand up and let's worship. And we're going to sing from the beginning, amen. Great is our God. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Come on, let's worship Him. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord and most worthy. Amen. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. The city of our God, the holy place. Hallelujah, Jesus. The joy of the whole Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. To God, amen. Come on. Great is the Lord in whom we have the victory. Glory to God. Give glory to Jesus. He hates us against the enemy. We bow down. We bow down on our knees. Glory to Jesus. Glory to the Lord. Amen. Whoa. And Lord, we want to lift your name on high. And Lord, we want to thank you. For the works you've done in our lives And Lord, we trust in your unfailing love For you alone are God eternal Through our earth and heaven above oh, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Can give glory to God! Amen! Hallelujah! Pastor Lee Chu and I just came back from Singapore where we were privileged to meet with key leaders from Asia and the Middle East, from Egypt, Syria, name it. It was about over a hundred of us. But even as we began to consult and talk, I can say this to you, that God is working worldwide. God is working worldwide. Amen. In the coming years, in the coming months, in the coming year, we're going to see tremendous things happening in the Middle East and in Asia. So don't miss out. Don't miss it. Don't be a spectator. Even as we, we represent Malaysia and we began to share what's happening in Sabah, they were so excited for us. We are Malaysians. God loves Malaysia. Amen. Amen. So in this time and season of our country's history, we go in. Yes, there's a great victory in, in, in Panampang, but it's not the end. Believe me, don't put down your guard. Amen. Don't stop now we need to push in next year we're gonna move in more next year amen we're gonna move in are you with me come on let's give what a type offering amen whoa we fight from victory not for victory but the battle is not over yet yes we're gonna go in next year until full total victory is won and revival comes to east malaysia amen Hallelujah. Come, I'm going to ask Pastor Nietzsche to close us in prayer. I know that the time is running out. But I sense that many of you have many battles in your own personal life. 
I want you to raise your hand towards God and we may have not have time to pray for you but if you need prayers just come to us at the end I feel God wants you to know God is a good God He never judges you He never finds fault with you and He, he is at peace with you if you are at peace with Him and He really wants to bring victory into your life so if you have battles that you are fighting your personal life or family life or whatever aspect of your life why don't you put your hands up just put your hands up I just feel God wants you to be assured that the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet so just put your hands up just, just don't be afraid I want to put my hands up I want to really war in the heavenlies and, and see God crush the feet of really crush Satan underneath our feet even in many realms yes our work life our personal life I want you to say thank you, Jesus. Say it after me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Come on, say it strong, my friends. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Say it one more time, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. You are good. You are good. And you are merciful. And you are merciful. You're on my side. You're on my and side. And you have won the victory at Calvary. And you have won, won the victory at today. Calvary. Today, 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 I declare, I declare the God of peace, the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath our feet. And Lord Jesus, and Lord Jesus I, declare, I declare I will see that victory in my life because you are good because and you are merciful. And I just want to partner with you. Thank you, Lord. Teach me how to pray. Teach me how to connect with you. Teach me how to hunger and thirst for you. Teach me how to worship you. Because you are so good and worthy of my worship. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we thank you. And now, God, we thank you. You know, I just want to declare this over every one of us. The last verse of Romans 16 actually says, And now to him, in fact, I'm going to put it up on the screen, and we can even say it together, and I'm going to pronounce this over all of us. And now, let's say it together, one, two, three. And now, now to, to him who is, who is able, able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, gospel the message, message I, I proclaim, proclaim about Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ to the, the only wise God, God be glory forever through Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, you are the only wise God. And Lord, you are able, you are able to bring us victory in the heavenlies. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Give Jesus a big clap.